Our next step in the creative, creative coding process is getting into the website and learning how to use the tools. When you first enter, you will see an area over here where both items are grayed out. This is going to be your stage place where you're going to put all of your blocks. This is going to be your preview window. And this is where you're going to have sprites, which is another name for characters, or backdrops. I'm going to click on backdrops, and I'm going to look for a different kind of backdrop. I'm going to go for a neighborhood. Once I add my neighborhood, I'm going to click on my sprite, click add. I can see that I have no sprites lined up there, no characters. So I'm going to go to sprite and I'm going to click on the add button. What I'm going to do is look for somebody that can tell a story. So I'm going to come over here to Paperboy because that's going to give me the type of character that's going to be telling a story about what's going on. I can choose to make my character bigger or smaller by coming to the right here. Instead of 40, I might make them 60. I change the number, I hit enter on my keyboard, and it changes the size of them. I can make him very large, or I can make them small. I'm going to give him the size that looks about right. And now, what, now, as soon as I add my sprite, I come to the left, and I'm going to see that I have a few blocks over here. So I'm going to simply drag when I click this green flag. The green flag is the symbol that's going to start it. You see the green flag is on this block, and the green, green flag is also right here. I'm going to um, I'm going to type in big news. Um, get your paper and read all about it. And I'm going to have this on the screen for 10 seconds. And then if I want, I could add a sound. The most important thing when creating any kind of coding activity is that your blocks are connected, just like a puzzle. If I have this one here, and I'm going to leave the brain pop popping sound that we all know, and I click on the start, you're going to see that the speech bubble is here but you're never going to hear the brain pop sound because it is not connected to the purple. Okay, I want to add some more blocks, so I'm going to click Show More. The nice thing about this while you're learning how to code is it only gives you a few blocks at a time. So the more I click, the more blocks I have, and I slide them over. Now let's say that I want to have two characters on my screen at the same time. Uh, maybe I want to do some planes. This is a big part. I'm going to put some planes up. I'm going to left click and I'm going to drag them up here. So all I'm doing is left click, drag them up to the sky. Maybe I want to look, make them look like they're a little further apart. That's a little bit too small. And they will look like they're flying over here. And now since this box is teal, you'll see that there's no box in the center because at this point, I haven't told that character what I wanted to do. I, now the other one, I did not have it. I just went straight to it. But what I want to do is I want to find a weight block. Meaning I want this to wait 12 seconds because I don't want my speech to overlap. And then I wanted to say uh, we are... Japanese books. Um, when I click on this now, I have two sprites in here, two characters in here. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this one. When I click on the green flag, you'll see that my speech bubble comes up here. This appears for 10 seconds. There'll be two seconds that there won't be any information on the screen, and then the speech bubble is going to appear up here. You can continue adding blocks and trial and error to see the way that it likes. Once you have this set up the way that you like, you will save it. If you want to get your students started with certain blocks, you can bring them out here. You can assign it to your class and give them a starting point when they open it up.